and it's not a joke. But we can still have fun, we can have a great time, and uh, I, I, obviously I've seen it happening, but I will say this, this is, this is bigger than me, this is bigger than any of the speakers here, this is bigger than you, this is somebody else's plan. And we just have a, we happen to be here at this time and it's a wonderful place to be. And I wouldn't, I couldn't ask for a, a more wonderful group of people to be with right now because I've seen some of these faces, I don't know, what, four times now. And it's, it's, there's not enough. I can't wait to see you more and more. So once again, I just thank you for being here and a wonderful time to be had the rest of this week. And I, I can't say it enough. This guy right here, when he came out with the video, Flat Earth Clues, I didn't know what I was getting into when I hit play the very first time other than Rob Skiba said, you got to watch it. You got to watch it. And that's exactly what I did. So I want to bring out to the stage a guy that's very special to me, a really good friend of mine who's working on a project with us now. And I just want to say, uh, Mark Sargent, come on out, man. And tear this up. Have a great time. This is yours. I love you, excited person in the back. All right, do we have, uh, can we switch over to my slide screen? I mean, I love the clouds. I could read it without the slides, but it works better with. Okay, so I'm gonna do this really quick because I know we're, we're kind of pressed for time. So some of you know how this drill works. I'm gonna speak for about 25 minutes and then open it up to Q&A. Q&A will be a microphone in the aisle over there, microphone in the aisle over there, and anybody that lines up to ask a question, I have an incentive for you you will get a signed Illuminati card, just like I did in Raleigh. Uh, this one's called the Sleeper, so everybody gets the same card. You don't get to get like random cards. And uh, if anybody gets an X or an O on their card, if you find it on your card, let me know, and I will give you something special come up to the stage afterwards. And we're still waiting for that, which is fine. We may have tech support come up before it's over. Guys? Anything? Do I have to do anything up here? One sec. Uh, also, there is media in the room. So if you see a slide up on the screen that you love or you hate, let them hear it because the media loves sound bites. Sorry, give us a minute here. My fault because it probably went into sleep mode. Don't film this. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll cut this in post. Doo -doo. Did everybody get a copy of the book? Good. Uh, I'm, I spent five and a half hours signing them. Uh, if you want me to inscribe it, you're going to have to catch me, but that's going to be a little tough. But I'm, I'm happy to do it for you. Okay. We had it, too. We absolutely had it. You'll know, you'll know if this works because the screen will change to um, Google Flat Earth. And I can do this absolutely without the slides. I can just read it. But Huh? Go to settings? Thanks. Thank you for that. Thank you. There it is. Perfect. Perfect. All right, thank you. Thank you, tech support. All right, this cuts into my Q&A time, but let's get right to it. Remember, if you see something you love or you hate on the screen for the media, yell, scream, boo, whatever, make hissing noises, you know, stuff like that. Well, well yeah, you can boo too, and you'll, we'll get to it pretty quick. Okay, so right off the bat, this is Kanye West. He is quoted as saying that his only regret is not being able to see himself perform live on stage. I used to think, used to think this was the most arrogant thing I had ever heard until I saw this guy. That's right, that's right. 
This is Neil deGrasse Tyson, otherwise known as he who shall not be named, the world's most popular scientist. His quote is as follows, science is true whether or not you believe in it. A lot of scientists feel this way. If they put their stamp on it, then it is an absolute fact. Well, here's one of their absolute facts, and I did this just for you guys. It's a fish. This is a coelacanth. And this is the coelacanth fossil record. Mainstream science said without a doubt that this rather unattractive fish and all others like it went extinct at least 70 million years ago. Every scientist in the fields relating to this fish was convinced that this was true and would have staked their careers on it. All the scientists in question were absolutely 100% put it in a certificate you can frame wrong. Why? This coelacanth was caught off the coast of South Africa in 1938, and it wasn't a fluke. Since then, they have been found in Kenya, Tanzania, Mozambique, Madagascar, just to name a few. I can assure you, without a doubt, this fish right here has not been dead for 70 million years. That's National Geographic swimming with them, by the way. How did science screw this up so badly? They saw the fossil record, which you saw earlier, and stopped looking for the truth. Science is only true until the day that it isn't. Why is this so important? Here's another guy you should boo. Ready? Yeah, that's right. This is Brian Cox. Brian Cox is an astrophysicist out of the UK. UK. He is the second most popular scientist in the world next to he who should not be named. He hates flat earth. Brian Cox hates it so much that he is, did I just lose my screen? Oh no, what happened? Go to settings. Do I have to, do I have to reset this? Ah, oh, I was on a roll guys. Run up here. It was, Brian Cox screwed it up. And here comes tech support. Oh boy. This may not be good. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna read until I'm gonna just I'm just gonna read these until uh, support we'll get to the slide eventually. You ready? Okay, so Brian Cox hates it so much that he is in complete denial of it. He won't even acknowledge what do you want me to hand it to you? Well you can you can come up here. It's okay. No, I don't mind. Tech support, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, and uh, I'll, I'll just read and we'll catch up to the slides. Honestly, it's the words anyway that mean something. The slides are good. Um, Brian Cox hates it so much that it is, he is in complete denial of it. He won't even acknowledge it exists. He states that it is not a thing now, that everyone here and at other conferences don't really believe in it, and that Flat Earth was never a thing. It's just a myth or legend, and that no culture... It's asking for a sign. No, no, no. Yeah. Cancel. Just X out. X out. You're good. It'll, it'll work. It'll work. I, I never use that. Sorry. Uh, it's just a myth or legend. No culture anywhere has ever believed in it. Brian thinks this is an absolute fact. And normally there'd be a slide up there. And you guys can look this up. I'll just reference stuff. All you have to do is look up on... Oh, there it goes. Perfect. You want to just hang out with me? Like over there? Okay, perfect. And you knew which slide to go to. He even knew which slide to go to. That's awesome. Okay, I find that interesting because there were a great many cultures that first looked at the world the same way, and they all drew the same images. Let's rattle off of some of these, shall we? Greek, Navajo, Babylonian, Mesa, Japanese, Persian, Viking, Indian, Mayan, Incan, Hebrew, Australian, Chumash, I don't know what Chumash is, Slavic, African, Sumerian, Mesopotamian, Norse, Hindu, Masonic, Little tip, when a secret society draws the world a certain way, you want to, might want to pay attention. Islamic, Roman, Egyptian, Aztec, Arabic, all of these large groups saw the world like this. Oh, you don't have to applaud. It's fine. One I enjoyed more than most was made about 500 years ago in the Netherlands by a man named Hieronymus Bosch. It is called the Garden of Earthly Delights, and it opens to show a paradise inside. Interesting trivia about this piece, a replica of it hung above the childhood crib of Leonardo DiCaprio. This will come up later, trust me. 
So it's 2019. I'm in a room full of people, and flat Earth is a thing. If I would have said this wor these words to you even five years ago, it would have been considered the most extreme fringe science fiction. But today, the term and ideas are almost commonplace. So how did we get to this point? How did flat Earth make it this far? How did we get here? It is one of the most unlikely tales you will ever hear with plot twists that would make a Hollywood writer blush. But as I am fond of saying, the truth is often stranger than fiction. None of what I am about to tell you is secret information. Anyone can look up the record for what happened. But if you don't, I can assure you, every word about what I'm about to say is true. On February 10th, 2015, I created the first of what ended up being the Flat Earth Clues series. And some of you know, did not think it would gain traction. I put my name and phone number in the first video because apparently I enjoy abuse. I practically begged people to call me up and prove me wrong so I could get back to my sleepy little life in Boulder, Colorado. Almost immediately, I was set upon by people who wanted to know more. The emails started pouring in and the phone calls came at all hours of the night. Podcasts wanted to do interviews, students wanted details, and so did a lot of people making videos on YouTube. Rob Skiba called and wanted to debate me. During the show, you could feel his mind racing with new possibilities. After the second show, True Frequency Radio contacted me and asked if I would do a program of my own to talk about Flat Earth and spread the word. And 2015 continued like that. A true grassroots year for Flat Earth. More channels dedicated to destroying the globe. And the entire conspiracy world took notice because it was and still is the most hated and the most polarizing fringe topic that there is. Professionals from different walks of life began to come forward. From the American military, we had a Navy missile instructor, Air Force navigator, Marine Corps sniper instructor, Navy submarine chief, Army artillery radar operator, Army master gunner, Army air traffic controller, Navy navigator, and a Navy electronic warfare technician. From the air, we had American flight instructor, air traffic controller, commercial airline captains, commercial airline co-pilots. And from the ground, we had industrial engineers, corporate travel agents, large project surveyors, and many others. As 2015 drew to a close, the topic had started to expand its different facets, discovering new ideas almost weekly, and enthusiasm was high, even though mainstream viewed it as just another internet flash in the pan. They couldn't have been more wrong. At the beginning of 2016, a Grammy-nominated rap artist named Bobby Ray Simmons Jr., known professionally as rapper B.O.B., released a new single called Flatline. The song was unusual for two reasons. The first was that it included a long audio clip from astrophysicist, he who shall not be named, as he described the Earth as being pear-shaped. The second was that it implied that the scientist was taking government money to hide the fact that the world was indeed flat. This is when the mainstream media first took notice, mostly because it was new news. This is something they had never seen, and even before the media could fully digest the concept, the scientist in question did the unthinkable. He fired back. For reasons that continue to remain unknown to this day, the leading face of mainstream science decided to make an appearance on Comedy Central and then do a monologue against rapper B.O.B. on why the Earth isn't flat. He used mo no animations, no graphics, and made it a point to use profanity at the end while symbolically dropping the mic on the topic. With the help of his nephew, Neil Tyson even made a response rap song, which I will not play for you. And I know I said Neil Tyson. I go back and forth on that. The effect it had was, well, flammable. It was, without a doubt, the most interesting story to start off the year and helped fuel the emerging flat earth topic in social media. Between the two people involved, one in the, in the music industry and the other in science, there was no way the average media editor could, could ignore it. The mainstream exposed ordinary people who had never looked at a single conspiracy to the simple words that now echo everywhere. Flat earth. In droves, the general population searched for the reason why this was a headline and were pulled into the rabbit hole from which few can escape, including all you fine people. <laughs> and if you think that's the strangest thing to start off the flat earth world in 2016, you would be sorely mistaken. 
Leonardo DiCaprio visited the Vatican. This is a real, you can watch the video of this. It's absolutely real. And guess what he brought up on camera? Flat Earth. Being an A-list celebrity only gets you 15 minutes with the Pope. True story. Did he talk about climate change? Yeah, a little bit. Did he bring the Pope an art book showing the world as an enclosed structure and how it represented the promise of the future? Indeed, he did. The Hieronymus boss, Bosch Pick, is right there in the center. You can barely see it, but it's that square shot at the top of that page. After Leonardo left, the Pope left the Vatican and flew to Cuba to meet with the Orthodox Pope. The first time the two had met in a thousand years. We don't know what they talked about, but after the Orthodox Pope left, he flew straight to Antarctica. One of the hot buttons of the Flat Earth community. Who else went to Antarctica in 2016? Well, Secretary of State John Kerry for one, and even though it may not seem strange to you, it did to me because he was there on election night when he should have been back in the States backing his candidate. And who was his candidate at the time? It's at, <laughs> I didn't even say her name. Yeah, it was Hillary Clinton. So why was he there when Hillary was supposed to win? Remember, it was supposed to be a landslide. Well, he should have been right there. It's like, what, did he know she was going to lose? Maybe. Who else was there? Astronaut Buzz Aldrin was there in 2016 and had to be, um, oh, now, now, Buzz is, all right, you can boo him if you want. All right. Uh, he had to be airlifted out for health reasons. We can only speculate on why all these high-profile people went to Antarctica in 2016, and it still to this day raises many questions. The very first Flat Earth Video Award show was also in February of 2016. Yes, there were already so many Flat Earth videos that they were starting to give out awards. By April, Flat Earth regional meetups were appearing. The first was in Houston, then Seattle, and after that, just about every state you could imagine. And this wasn't just happening in the United States. Across the mind, yeah. Dave Murphy from the UK had already made his first Flat Earth appearance on Macedonian television. By August of 2016, it started, I started keeping track of the numbers and the sheer volume of videos the topic was helping create in social media. We weren't just an anomaly. We were a bona fide trend and gaining speed every month. As 2016 grew, drew to a close, we were a cool club, well, sort of cool, that had gotten some solid attention, but the future was uncertain, sometimes even precarious. Not for long, within a month, all that would change. In 2017, like a sign from the heavens, someone had carved into the hillside of Los Angeles, Google Flat Earth. Even now, this person responsible has never come forward. If you are this person, I would love to talk to you. From what I understand, it was a one-man job. He just went up there with a safety vest and a hard hat and a shovel and just carved this out. No one stopped him. It's brilliant. That very night, basketball all-star Kyrie Irving announced during a podcast that he believed in Flat Earth. And the day after that, LeBron James, the big guy, the most popular face in American basketball supported him. I cannot overstate the shock waves that Flat Earth was creating in the sports world. Every sports periodical in the world covered this story immediately. Then the general media dived in. Over the next few months, it was the water cooler topic. The crossover media was surreal. This is Rolling Stone article about Jimmy Kimmel and Dave Chappelle on late night television discussing Kyrie Irving and Flat Earth. The word was now even spreading so quickly across multiple levels of media, it was surreal. To add to the fire, NBA Hall of Famer Shaquille O'Neal supported Kyrie as well during a live broadcast, but only stood by it for 10 days. Turns out some of his sponsors weren't thrilled with the idea, as you can imagine, and so a hasty late-night talk show retraction was put into place, where, also on Jimmy Kimmel, I have a feeling Jimmy Kimmel's team is here today. I don't know if they're here right the second. I, he's not going to make an appearance, personally. Uh, the UK program Big, Big Brother kicked off a member for harassing someone who believed in Flat Earth. The Canadian comedy team Trailer Park Boys did a full skit on the topic, and the year was only half over. Regional meetups were increasing every month. Denver... Boston, Phoenix, Las Vegas, Florida, Hawaii, Canada, London. Our first formal debate was in Atlanta. 
This is a shot right here. This is out of uh, Seattle, Washington. There's Patricia Steer and Dean Marvel in the begin in the middle. I'm up in the corner. I should be in the middle, but I'm not. That's fine. I'm not bitter. And as 2017 entered its final months, there stood the crowning achievement, the first Flat Earth Conference in 500 years. It might as well have been forever. An ancient truth made new again, simply by brave people believing in it. International media flew in for the unique event and were amazed by the conviction, the passion, and the sincerity of all the people involved. Oh, I hate this next slide. The largest YouTube channels in the world were now wading into the flat earth pool. This is the largest YouTube channel in the world. This is PewDiePie. Uh, that's Patricia Steer on the left and what appears to be Shrek on the right. I don't know how he created that shot, but as you know, I do not photograph well. Right, let's get past this slide, shall we? Late night talk shows were taking shots at us monthly. Who the hell was Freddie Flintoff? I didn't know, but apparently he was talking about Flat Earth over in London. Freddie Flintoff turns out is a cricket player. That's uh, English for baseball. You know, it, yeah. <laughs> HBO, Vice, ABC, BuzzFeed, German television, Russian television, British television, Hustler magazine. Yeah, I snuck in that. University classes, radio stations. The last day of 2017, rapper B.O.B. was preaching Flat Earth to Bill Nye, the science guy. <laughs> Thank you. I don't actually have a Bill Nye slide, so there you, have, there you go. So you'll have to boo now. Um, that same week, Kyrie Irving was uh, using Flat Earth in his show, shoe commercials, and still mainstream science thought we would just go away. So what did we do in 2018? We changed gears. If some is good, then more is better. More meetups, not just every month, but almost every week. I had to build a special playlist on YouTube, and now there are hundreds of regional meetups in it. You would think at this point that nothing could surprise the media when it came to Flat Earth. They had already seen a rap battle between a Grammy nominee and the world's most popular scientist. Then they watched the sports world openly debate the shape of the world. What other rabbits did Flat Earth have in its hat? You know, before I get to the rabbit, I got to mention. So, yeah, that's San Francisco, right? Here's, here's the fun one. Ready? That's South Korea. <laughs> and then, <laughs> what's that? Right. Right in the middle of this, and you can't see him, he's towards the front. That's D Marble. Hey, I don't know how you get into everything, D. I didn't go to South Korea. Do you even speak Korean? What the hell? <laughs> All right, so rabbit in the hat. What happened? Here's a rabbit for you. Mad Mike Hughes. <laughs> like, I know, it's kind of mixed, right? He's suing me, actually. That's a whole other story, I'll tell you. Um, a California stuntman put a giant flat earth sticker on the side of a homemade rocket and literally launched the topic to a new level. Did it prove flat earth? Not at all. Was it covered again and again in social media as the launch was delayed twice? Yes, it was. In 2018, there wasn't just one flat earth conference. There were three, one in the US, one in Canada, and one in the UK, all different, all fantastic. We now had dedicated venues where we could share our ideas and experiences. Just before the first Canadian conference, the first mainstream documentary on the topic defied all expectations and competed in 22 film festivals in seven countries. So many showings that the producers could not even begin to, to attend them all. Before the year was over, it would be purchased by Amazon, YouTube, iTunes, and Netflix. And during all this, the numbers, the precious stats that I love, reached for the impossible. In June of 2018, Flat Earth, which started at a modest 50,000 search results, had hit 20.9 million. The cherry on top being that the President of the United States, Donald Trump, was sitting at 20.8. And somewhere along the line, the powers that be decided we were getting a little too excited. The U.gov survey said it all. Americans were now starting to lean towards Flat Earth too quickly for their tastes. Indeed, a full third of young Americans didn't believe in the globe anymore. I know, right? 34%. And if you haven't seen the Asmund Gold video, which came out in the last two weeks, you got to watch it because under 20, we're tracking about 53%. Scary for science. YouTube took matters into their own hands because of this. Yeah, I know. You hate them, but we need them. Uh, and they um, took down their own scoreboard so that we would stop pointing at it. 
Google went before the United States government and said they were doing what they could to deal with the flat earth problem that kept spreading, but secretly still loved us because we kept people watching YouTube, which is now the largest television network in the world. National Geographic tracks some of us down and condemned the Flat Earth Movement as being a danger to medicine, a threat to technology, and had the potential of sending science back to the Dark Ages. <laughs> to the Dark Ages! <laughs> really? You're gonna clap the Dark Ages? Come on. Oh, uh, right, right, right. I got you. I got you. Uh, I thought they were being a, a tad dramatic, but they did have a point. We weren't going away, and they knew it. Behind the scenes, they told me that it concerned them that science wasn't meeting us on the battlefield. They were hoping they could rally some of them to engage us. It didn't work. Science did everything they could to avoid the topic, to pretend that it wasn't there, and that people weren't listening. Shane Dawson, one of the largest channels on YouTube, made a single Flat Earth video in 2018, and it now has 32 million hits. Shane's demographic is under 20. What is science going to do to stop that? Nothing, because it's not a real topic, remember? It's nothing when Jaren and Globusters and Karen B and FE Core convince people with long distance laser tests, when Rob Skiba does weather balloon tests, when J. Tolan Media does daytime infrared photography. Don't worry about it as we look at boats that refuse to go over the horizon, as we turn heads with street activism. There's a group called Globe Lie who already finished a town-to-town -to -town tour in the UK, and 2019, right now, they are still on tour, touring every country in Europe. And we're just getting started. 2019 is the year of Flat Earth Conventions. This year alone, we had events in Los Angeles, New Zealand, Calgary, Stockholm, UK, Amsterdam, South Carolina, Brazil, and Dallas, Texas. Every month, I hear the globalists say that Flat Earth is fading away. This is the cover of Newsweek from June of this year. Note the Flat Earth thing on the bottom, and they're actually pumping up the globe to make it round. Cover of Newsweek. Think that's a fluke? This is the cover of Popular Science right now on newsstands. You can go buy it on the newsstand right now. Oh, don't get me wrong. They hate us. Why? We're out there. That magazine has been published for 147 years, and I know you can't see it very well, but just below the S in science, it says, literally, this is a weird one. They gave us an eight-page spread. Uh, when they described me in it, did they call me goofy or warm or instantly disarming? No. Does anyone know how they described me? Yes, that's right, baby-faced. That's what they used. So in, in honor of that, uh, anyone, in fact, we'll, we'll figure out, we're, we're, oh my God, I'm gonna run out of time before this is over. Uh, I'll make sure I give out a couple copies of this to some people. Uh, let's see here. This is my message to science. What is flat earth? Well, you better figure it out quick because we're bringing the fight to you. We become one of the most trending topics in the world with almost no resources, and we did it in four years. We can break down your space videos, your images, and you better believe we're going after your theories because that's what most of them are, just theories. It's 2019, sorry, that's the one I was supposed to go to. And now we have an army, channel after channel, rising to six figures on YouTube. Jaronism, Rob Skiba, Celebrate Truth, Controversy 7, Red Pill Philosophy, ODD Reality, and the five-figure channels? I've literally lost count. Channels dedicated against NASA, channels dedicated to experiments, channels dedicated to debates against globalists, channels dedicated to activism. So many different facets, it feels more like a school than an invasion force. But doesn't that make sense? because every great army has an academy behind it. And we've created one from the sheer volume of our online content. Make no mistake, Flat Earth University is very different from other universities based on scientism. They will tell you that we're on a tiny rock flying through an impossible universe and that your life means virtually nothing. We will gently remind you that this incredible world and everything in it was built just for you because you are special, valuable, and unique. 
They will tell you that science is true whether or not you believe in it. To never question the status quo and never revisit old theories. We encourage people to not take our word for it, but instead do their own research and question everything. They will tell you to abandon your religion, your faith, because it has no place among scientism. Flat Earth University makes no religious demands. Whatever your faith is, keep it, because the very nature of Flat Earth implies that it was built, which means by default there was a creator. And the great thing about Flat Earth University is you can take courses from anywhere, anytime at your own pace, no matter what your occupation or lifestyle is. There, is no, there are no exams, and we have thousands of instructors all learning from each other every day. We don't just inform people of new observations. We open minds, and when they are open, that enthusiasm becomes infectious. Flat Earth isn't a theory, it is part of the Great Awakening, one that will eventually define our civilization and our legacy. In closing, very good to the mic fast if you're going to ask questions because i got like five minutes, they might give me eight. Uh, I'd like to remind people of my mission statement. My name is Mark Sargent and I'm a proud Flat Earther. It is my addiction, my unhealthy obsession, and next to my dear mother, it is my favorite thing in life. It is everywhere just waiting for you to discover it. The people involved are kind, sincere, and most importantly, open-minded. I'm hoping that you will find what I have, knowledge, truth, and love for each other, the way the world was always supposed to be. The globe is already dead, they just don't know it yet. Long live Flat Earth. Thank you. All right, we have time for a few questions. Anybody that's up with the microphone, even if you line up with the microphone, get some Illuminati card. Anybody that has Illuminati card with an X or an O in it, come see me after this is done. So question, I can't see because of the house lights. Gary. Who's on that side? It's Gary. Yeah. Hear me? Um, with YouTube uh, starting to restrict us in Flat Earth, do you think that we need to be uh, maybe taking up Jaron's video from last year where he was saying uh, that we need to go uh, and say to NASA that they need to actually uh, put a camera on the moon? Um, I just wondered if we actually can do like a GoFundMe and actually raise, raise awareness within Flat Earth, raise money and actually tra target uh, NASA to actually say we want to actually, if you think about it, there's a lot of USA people in there, your tax dollars are not being used wisely and they're obviously just perpetuating lies. So my question to you is, Mark, is yeah. what do you think about us trying to push NASA? Because we're doing global light tours, we're doing conventions, we're doing activism. Yeah. At the end of the day, we need to take it to a higher level. So I was just wondering what you thought about that. Uh, I, I do think, I mean, as you know, we've been going after NASA pretty hard for the last four or five years, and we've been, been pushing them. Um, I, I've kind of got mixed feelings because it seems like it's happening naturally anyway. I was watching, uh, you know, the astronaut Scott Kelly. Feel free to boo here. There we go. Scott Kelly uh, has been, because he's touring with his new book, and every time I see him now, he keeps saying that, by the way, that the Earth is round. Uh, and, and he's doing that deliberately because people keep bugging him. We have our members that are accosting him basically on a regular basis, which is great. Um, asking NASA to prove it, uh, we could do crowdfunding to, to, you know, to, to try to get him to push in that direction, but I think it's happening naturally anyway. I mean, I, NASA's feeling the heat. We know that. I mean, they're talking about, oh, yeah, we're going to the moon again, and they're trying to do it like 2024. It's never, ever going to happen. So it's a good idea, and I'd love to discuss it further, but I can't right now because we're, no, we're low. Not. No, no worries. Um, yes, you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Hey, you know, you said we're in the, you mentioned the dark ages. I think we're in the Mark ages, the Mark Sargent ages. The Mark ages. ages uh, Come on. Uh, no, no, the no. Mark Sargent. No, no, no. Don't, don't my, give me my, that much credit, but thank you for that. And thank you for, for confronting NASA, which everybody knows actually means not always telling truths. Um, my question for you is, we all know for a fact that the earth is flat, okay? Yeah. But is there a general consensus as to how thick it is because no the reason the reason being like if if i was if you got to dig a hole like say i'm digging a hole because i got to bury a few dogs right am i just dropping a garbage bag of dogs into outer space 
Like, how, how, how far do I got to go down? How far can I go down? That is the and weirdest series of questions I've received all year. I also wanted to say, oh my God. I didn't, I didn't put that thing in the hillside, Google Flat Earth, but I did spray paint it on my mom's carport. Nice. Nice. Thank you. Thank you for that. Thank and you. as far as the thickness goes, uh, next question over here in just a second. As far as the th thickness goes, when he says, oh, how thick is it? I don't know. Even mainstream science. How deep is the deepest hole? Hey, Miles, there you go. It's like science can't go further than this. We don't have to either. There you go. And by the way, thank you for all knowing that. I love the fact that the Flat Earth community memorizes scientific factoids. Like, it just it makes me smile at night. Yes. Hi, Mark. Uh, my name's Noah, and uh, I'm kind of a newbie to this. This is my first convention. Yeah. Uh, so I'm just going to ask the first question that comes to my mind. Yeah. Uh, what is the um, what is your opinion on the flat Earth map? Um, all the maps that I've seen around here, all the models right. have the um, the uh, the outer the areas outer stretched out widely. Take Australia for example. Australia yeah. is approximately five percent, maybe um, wider than it is long. You know, it's approximately square, let's yeah. say. But the model is stretched out. I don't know, maybe three or four times to uh, account for that. Right. Because if you take Let's say if you take an orange and then yeah. you draw the earth on it, yeah. like the globe model, and you try to flatten it out, you can't flatten out a globe. Right. So things at the edges have to spread out further. Okay, let me, let me shorten this for you because, again, we're, we're really short on time. I'm like counting seconds. I'm sure somebody's going to come up with a, with a wooden hook and pull me off. No, um, it's metal. Which is the what? It's metal. The hook is metal. Oh, the hook is metal. Thank you. Thank you. That's awesome. The, uh, when it comes to the map, it's a generality. And just about every, everybody in this room, all the hardcore members know that. When it comes to the map, we look, I mean, that's part of the reason why we're here. We kind of try to break down the minutia. We don't have all the answers for, for the map. All we can do at the end of the day is agree that it's not a globe and go from there. Um, I will try to talk with you and other more people because I get that question all the time. But as far as the map goes, it's more of a generality. I mean, it's our starting point, but it's definitely not our finishing point. Yes, you over here. Uh, yeah, um, since we cannot unknow this once we know it, yeah. how can we enjoy a movie or read a book again <laughs> without getting angry about everything? Yeah, I'm sorry about that. Um, yeah, for those of you who are really big fans of Star Trek and Star Wars and Stargate and Battlestar Galactica and everything else, it is a little tough. I mean, I generally have to like, like click off to watch it and just pretend it's another dimension because, yeah, I... It, I'm sorry. It, there's there's not much I can do. You, when you get into this, your mind changes in multiple ways, and watching media is a little tougher. I don't watch nearly as many movies as I used to. Does that help? Um, how many? I don't want to. I don't want to keep dragging. Mark, uh, Mark, we got about five minutes. Okay, good. Hey, Mark. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, where do um media uh, media showers come from? Uh, me, uh, media lights. Somebody's going to have to translate that for me. Meteor, meteor, oh, meteor showers? Okay. Meteor showers. Uh, meteor showers. I, I'll go with what I said five years ago um, with Jonathan from Jersey said that, uh, you know, it's just somebody like throwing rocks into an aquarium. Um, do I think they're real? Yeah, sure. Do I think it's part of the system? Yeah, sure. I, that's all I really got. I mean, it's just part of the grand system. I treat it almost no differently than the sun, moon, stars, and planets. Although it seems to be a little more mechanical. Find me, find me a meteor strikes. Find me, you know, there's six billion smartphones in the world. Find me a video of a meteor actually hitting something. I don't care if it's water or it's a sand bed or it's, a, it's any, find me a meteor hitting something. Somebody should have filmed this by now. And don't show me something going over the hill and a little flash. I want to actually see the damn thing. Um, uh, 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 there was a meteor in uh, Kansas City. Uh it just happened. The oh, days did ago. it just happen? Yeah. Yeah. Did anyone film it? Yeah. Uh, mm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, did they? Uh, no. 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 One. One per. One question per guy yeah, here. Give him a card. Send. Send him. Go ahead. Send thank him you. Away. Oh yeah. No worries. And by the way, anyone that's in line when when we shut down, just pass out what remaining cards are left. Okay. Okay. Uh, over there. Hi, brother Mark. Hi. I'm Mary. Hi. Never a straight answer. NASA. Never a straight answer. Yeah, the other guy he was like, he said, NASA, you might as well have given us chicken soup recipe. It was like, what? He is one of your oldest flat earthers, so we got to go there. Okay. Um, my question is with um, how they put everything in front of us in plain sight yeah. and hide it yeah. and never give us a straight answer. Right. Um, hindsight is 2020. Yes. Do you have any prophecy, insight, oh, or for wisdom 2020? 
about the date, January 12th, 2020? No, I'm not going to give a specific date. I think 2020, though, is a big year. And if you're, if you're wondering why, I've heard a lot of buzz about 2020 in general because I believe that the powers that be, they like to do things very literal. They're not as enlightened and open-minded, as intelligent as all you fine people. Uh, the general public, I'm not necessarily going to call them mouth-breathing troglodytes, but... I will. But they, okay. But at the same time, they, they need things literal. The, whatever the narrative is has to be really, really simple. And so, kind of like 9 11, you know, 911, you know, call the police. 2020, we all know, 2020 vision, 2020 hindsight. We use 2020 all the time. It's a, it's a term that everybody knows. So, is something weird going to happen next year? I think it's going to be a big year. Uh, but I'm going to make any specific predictions? No, not yet. Okay, then not Mary yet. did, not Mark. The what? Then Mary did me, not Mark. That's my prophecy. That's my winsome. Oh, okay. That's, that's my insight. Okay. Something big, I think, is going to happen on 1 1 2. All right. Well, we'll see. Okay. All right. Call yeah, me. Again, remember, I'm from Seattle, and Seattle was supposed to be destroyed a few weeks ago during the football uh -huh. game, and it didn't. And I was watching, and people were like, are you going to go to the game? I'm going, hell no, I'm not going to the game. Uh -huh. Now, did I believe it? No. But at the same time, so when your life's on the line, you're not going to go. Anyway, thank you. Mark, what? I called you last year. You haven't called me back. I did just leave you a message and say thank you. Call me. Call me. No, again. you call me. Oh, I already okay. called you. You owe me well, a call. Just, just, just. Just, just email me. I will, I will do what I can. I get a few calls. Thank you. Emails. No worries. Because I'm dumb and I put my phone number out there. Yes, over here. Hi, Mark. Um, my name is Vanessa. Um, I just wanted to ask what you thought about the truth in the potential flat earth um, and hollow theory combo. The just hollow earth in general? Uh, maybe hollow earth and how it... Uh, and, and, and How it's tied correct. to flat earth? Correct, yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, if, if anyone that knows, and I, I think it's in the book, um, that I was into hollow earth first. That's how I got into flat earth. I was looking through other things like, oh, hollow earth, that seems kind of fun. And that's how I got into Admiral Byrd. And Admiral Byrd is mostly known for hollow earth. And then I saw that side thing where he was tied to flat earth. In fact, it was almost most of the conspiracy world was focusing on him with hollow earth. And then it's like, wow, he spent all of his life basically in Antarctica. So do I believe it's, it's, it's possible? Yes. But do I think it's the same? Hollow Earth assumes that it's a globe and it's, a, it's an empty core in the middle. Whereas Flat Earth, my version of it is, you know, because we don't need much to survive. Remember that most of us here, you live between sea level and one mile up. I mean, Hollow Earth, if you had a cave that was 10 miles high, you could fly airplanes very, very easily. So do I think it's possible? Yes. And I, I do believe in it. Thank you. Yep. One last one. Here we go. Okay. I'd like to say thank you. I'm Mari for being the Flat Earth Meetup representatives oh, to making videos. You, um, I'm the Bend Flat Earth girl that you know put on the, um, the meetups. And, yeah. and it's been a very, like, when, when it's your time, you'll figure it out that the Earth is flat. And yeah. there's so many people out there that I encourage to do meetups yeah. to and, find and the people in your community. And let me, let me end on this, um, and, and I do, I, I do try to promote it. If anyone wants, wants to do a meetup, we're not talking a conference, anything formal like this with audio and video and computer problems. The, uh, I'm talking about meetups. You can literally, I've had people, it's like all you do is find a quiet restaurant or a bar or a library or whatever it is, and all you have to do is you'd say, show, send me something or other people in the community. It's like, hey, can you promote my meetup? And I just create a, a quick little video, and people show up. If you build it, flat earthers will come. And they will. You'd be amazed how many people, and, and you'll get people that are like, you know, like, like getting away from spouses. It's like my husband or wife doesn't know I'm here, and it's wonderful. I mean, I have I have never seen a flat Earth meetup get skunked. It's it's amazing how fast there, we have people everywhere, absolutely everywhere, and uh, which is why I love being in, in groups like this. You know, you're in a room full of like-minded people who do not judge you. They care a lot about you, and they're on the same page as you. So anyway, thank you guys very much for all this, and uh, I will be available. Thank you. Good job. Thanks, man. Mark Sargent, everybody.